the word position node in this video i'm gonna explain what it is what it's used for and how we can use it by the end of this video you'll be able to create these materials and most importantly understand how they work so let's do it you can download the project file for this video on my patreon the link is in the description right click in the material graph and search for absolute world position nothing comes up that's because we should search for world position absolute isn't a part of its name but when we add the node there it is absolute world position it has no inputs only three outputs one for xyz one for xy and one for the z or the height of the world in the 5.1 version and the versions before that it used to only have one output and it gave us the xyz values so we needed to use the mask node to be able to use the different channels here in the details tab there's the shader offsets drop down i'll go over its options later in the video and this section here adds a description to the node all the nodes have it we can also right click on the node and add the description here so what does it do? It outputs the position of the current pixel in world space. Let's connect the XYZ output to the base color input. We get this colorful result. But it might be hard to understand why we get these colors. So if I first connect it to a mask node and check the individual channels, it's more understandable. So let's first enable only the R channel. As you can see, we'll get a black and white output. Basically every channel is made up of different values between 0 and 1. 0 and anything below is black, 1 and anything above is white, and decimals between 0 and 1 are different shades of grey. That's why we get this black and white result. I'll go more in depth about this topic in the component mask and the basic math videos, so watch them to better understand it. I'll put their links in the description below. Let's assign the material to something in the level to better understand it. Save the material. Let's add a cube and move it to the origin of the world and assign the material to it. We have only enabled the R channel so the values are along the X axis. If I move the cube we can see that the colors don't move with it. They are not attached to each other. Absolute world position outputs the position of the current pixel in world space. This is the origin of the world. The x value is 0, so the output is 0. No matter where I move this cube, the origin of the world won't change. It is always 0 in this place right here. So that's why when I move the cube, the colors don't move with it. Unreal Engine's unit system is centimeters, so world position changes the values based on that. This cube is 1 meter or 100 centimeters on each side. If 0 is in the middle, we have 50 units on this side and 50 units on this side. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way to 50 here and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 all the way to minus 50 on here. As you know 1 and anything above is shown as white and 0 and anything below that is shown as black. That's why this side is black and this side is white. If we zoom in here where it changes from black to white, we can see that it's all black, then there's a gradient and then it becomes white. That's the 0 to 1 range where the gray values are. We have 0 which is black, 1 which is white and all the decimals in between them which are the gray values. Again, it's all based on the position in the world. When I move the cube 10 cm in the x-axis, the zero of the world won't move. It's the object that's moving. So now this pixel on the mesh has the zero position in the x-axis. Base color shows all the values above one as white. But if you connect it to the emissive input and apply the material, that's when we see that as it gets further from the origin, the emissive intensity increases. Here, the emissive intensity is one, but here on this side, the emissive intensity is 50. If I scale it to something like 3 in the x-axis, the emissive intensity on this part is 150. And if I scale it to something like 0.3, the emissive intensity on this side is 15. So let's disconnect the emissive input and apply the material and scale it back to 1. The same is true for the G and the B channels. The G channel gives us the values in the y-axis and the B channel gives us the values in the Z axis. 
when we add these channels on top of each other, we get this colorful result. Here all the values are 1 or higher, so we get white. Here all the values are negative, so we get black. Here Z is negative, but X and Y are positive, so we get yellow. Here only X is positive, so we get red. Green means only Y is positive. And blue means only Z is positive. That's how all the colors are made. There are different combinations of XYZ or RGB values. Here in the details tab, under shader offsets, we have four options. Two of them are absolute world position, and two of them are camera relative world position. Then there are including material shader offsets and excluding material shader offsets options. We know what the absolute world position is. Camera relative world position is the same, but the camera is the origin of the world. Meaning if I set it to camera relative, the origin of the world moves with the camera. And here on the node, it changes from absolute to camera relative. So that's why we don't get the node when we search for absolute world position. Because the node is world position and absolute is just the default type of data we get when we add it. Let's apply the material. And now we can see that as we move around, the colors move too. Let's get back to the material. Including and excluding material shader offsets refers to the information the material may have in world position offset. I'll show you the difference between them when we get to the UV examples. So now that we know what kind of data it outputs, let's go over how we can use it in our materials. Mostly it is used as a height mask or to control the UVs. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. You can ask questions or answer them, share your work in progress and more. If you're interested in supporting the channel and downloading the project file for this video, check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. Let's first use it as height mask. Create a new material, name it, and open it. Add the world position node and the lerp node. Connect the Z output to a saturate and connect it to the alpha. Always use saturate for the alpha. I've explained why we do that in the LERP video. If you're using a previous version, add a mask node and make sure only the B channel is checked. Then connect the component mask to the saturate node and to the alpha input. Connect the LERP to the base color input and let's move it like this. And let's add two textures from the starter content. I'll add the rock texture and the grass texture. Connect them like this. Okay, now we can see that the sphere is divided into two sections in the z-axis. The grass is on top and the rock is on the bottom. Apply the material. We don't need this one anymore. And let's assign it to the cube. Now any pixel of the cube which is below 0 in the z-axis is rock and any pixel above 1 is grass. It doesn't matter if I move, rotate or scale it. This is where the transition happens, height of 0 in wall space. But what if we want to move the transition? What if we want it to happen for example in the positive 200 units in the z-axis? For that, we should subtract the value we want from the height of the world. So let's go back to the material, add a subtract node, connect the Z output to the A input, and promote the B input to a parameter. Let's name it transition height. Connect the subtract to the saturate node, and apply the material. Let's check it. Now as I change the transition height value, it moves up or down. If you want to know the math behind it and why this is happening, watch the basic math video. The transition is kinda sharp right now. Let's give ourselves the ability to make it smooth. So go back to the material, 
to control the fall off, I'm gonna divide this value before feeding it into the saturate node. So move this over here, add a divide node and the parameter, I'll name it transition fall off. Set the default value to 1, connect them like this and connect the divide to the saturate node. Apply the material. Now as I increase the fall off value, the transition becomes smoother. For the next example, I've scattered a simple cylinder on this landscape using the foliage tool. Let's duplicate this material and open it. Delete the textures and add two constant threes. Set them to blue and red. Then connect them like this. Save the material and let's assign it to the base mesh of the cylinders. Now we can see that down here the cylinders are blue and up here the cylinders are red. We can change where the transition happens. and it's fall off. So this is what we can do if we want the foliage to have different colors based on their height. For example, we may want to have blue flowers on the lower parts of the train and red flowers on the higher parts of the train. This is how we should approach it. We can also use it to control the UVs. Create a new material and open it. I'll add this UV checker texture to the material. You can download it for free on my website. Add the world position node and connect the XY output to the UV's input on the node. Remember, XYZ in 3D space is the same as RGB in color space and UVW in texture space. If you're using an older version, you should use a component mask. Make sure the R and the G channels are checked. Connect the texture to the base color and save the material. Assign it to the cube. We can't see anything right now, but if we zoom on the top, we can see the texture tiling. Each tile is one centimeter. In the basic math video, I explained that the UV space is in the zero to one range. After that, the texture tiles. When we use the world position node, the zero to one range in the UV space becomes one centimeter. That's why each tile is one centimeter. Now this cube is 100 centimeters on each side, so the texture is tiled 100 times in the x-axis and 100 times in the y-axis. I can make the texture bigger by using a multiply or the divide node. We can divide the world position by 100 or multiply it by 0.01 to make it 100 times bigger. I'm gonna go with the multiply node. So let's multiply it by 0.01 and connect it to the UV's input. Apply the material. Now the texture size is more reasonable. It's gonna tile every 100 centimeters. If I move the cube, the texture won't move because the UVs are based on the absolute world position. It's like we have this texture that's been projected and exists in the world and the model is moving around through it. In the material graph, you can see that as I pan, the texture preview is moving. That's because the texture is staying in the same position on the screen. It's a good representation of what's happening in the level. If I change the shader offsets to camera relative, the texture moves based on the movement of the camera. Let's apply the material and go in the level. It's a funny effect. If we're close to the surface, we might think that we're not moving until we get to the edges. For example, now I'm moving to the right, but you won't see it until I get to here. Let's set it back to absolute world position and apply. Add this brick texture from the starter content and delete this one. Connect them like this. The alpha channel of this texture is a black and white texture. We can use it for the world position offset. So let's connect it and save the material. I want to use this to demonstrate the difference between including and excluding material shader offsets. Let's add this plane to the level and move it to the origin of the world. 
it's a simple plane but it has a lot of vertices so it's great for the effect I want to show you. Assign the material to it and let's zoom in. We can see the displacement. Now let's change between including and excluding to see the difference. This is including by default, let's set it to excluding and apply. Can you see the difference? Including, excluding. When we use including, world position offset input is added to the vertex position and gets interpolated up to the pixel shader. But when we use excluding, only the vertex position gets interpolated up to the pixel shader. Of course, when the shader offset is zero, they both look the same. If I place multiple copies of this mesh next to each other, they share the same tiling. And no matter how I move or rotate them, they align perfectly. Even if I scale them, they always line up with each other. Because I'm using the XY output, the texture is being projected in the Z axis. That's why the texture is stretching on the sides of the cube. We can also project the texture along the X direction and the Y direction. For that we should use the component mask node. To project along the X axis, we should use the G and B channels. And to project along the Y axis, we should use the R and B channels. The great thing about using the world position node for the UVs is that the mesh doesn't need to be unwrapped. We can combine the X projection, the Y projection and the Z projection and texture objects without unwrapping them. Unreal has some nodes specifically for that and that's the subject for the next video which I'm gonna put here after uploading it. So click here for more Unreal stuff and thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.